This is Andy Tube, and this is video 14C. That's part of my mini series all about tension, which is inside my series of the restoration of the Singer Model 404. I, if you saw part one of that series, it showed me removing the covers and the whole tension assembly by removing the set screw here. But I mounted everything back on here because when, when you go to work on a machine, of course, this is how you find it. And I wanted to show you just a step-by-step, part-by-part removal. Of this tension system, there's about 22 parts. And in video um, 14B, I showed you the tension releasing lever over here with the hinge screw and the little spring on the end in here. <clears throat> so I'm going to show you the other 19 parts now and how to take them off. But if you came here just hoping to find something about cleaning the tension, um, I will tell you that Singer just says to take a lint brush, um, open up the tension, meaning turn it to the left as far as it'll go, and raise the presser foot lever to release tension on these discs and then they tell you to brush the area out which helps and uh, really you, sh you should do that uh, every time that you sew something or before you sew um, a lot of people also like to use uh, compressed air um, and I don't recommend using compressed air on any part of a sewing machine and the reason why is uh, during restoration I have found impacted lint and dust and dirt in all kinds of funny places in the machine and a lot of people feel it, that, it, that that doesn't count up here because you can just give it a little spray and get it off but if you uh, if you saw the whole tension unit when I removed it before the whole assembly um, in here is this uh, like the the uh, thread take up spring and for it to work properly it has to coil a little bit uh, back and forth let me loosen this one a little bit as it as it works and that coil of the spring has to turn and even though it's inside there when you blow that compressed air that kind of tunnel or hmm, hole where this mounts into can get all impacted with lint and dust and I've had them to the point where the spring is frozen and it can't really function properly and people have lost their tension so I don't, I don't really recommend uh, compressed air, the bobbin area, or any part of it. Um, so uh, instead of that, you can use your lint brush if you need to go deeper. I take a little one inch wide strip of some cheesecloth or piece of an old uh, t-shirt, something like that, that's, that's soft and I'll just dip it in alcohol and I'll gently put it between the parts in here like the uh, tension disc and kind of give it a gentle shoe shine I call it but you have to be careful not not to bend or damage the spring and it can be time consuming to to get in between all three of those plates and all around all the parts so you can definitely do that and I like that better than the canned air and it's more thorough than just a lint brush but if, if you don't want to take it apart like I'm going to do and check the parts and clean it and stuff um, if you're if you're in a hurry I would rather use the vacuum cleaner hose like the attachment hose and raise the presser foot to 
to release tension on everything and gently put that on and be careful with that spring don't bend the spring put it on as far as you can turn the vacuum on and then exercise the lifter lever back and forth a few times and uh, that will get most of the dirt and the lint out of there now if you have crud really built up on the tension stud that's where this uh, giving it a shoe shine can get that kind of stuff off with the alcohol and and you want to use nothing on it or alcohol you definitely don't want to use any cleaner that's going to leave a residue and you definitely don't want to use oil if you were going to pack this up for a few months then okay fine brush some oil on here but if you leave a cleaner residue or oil, of course, it, it just everything is slippery and you're not going to get thread tension, which is the whole I idea of the unit. So I'd rather see you just gently put a vacuum hose. Um, there's nothing here that's going to come off, especially this one. It's all metal. And you just, you just need to watch that little take-up spring that you don't smash it or bend it. So just run your vacuum and there you go now I like to take it off and I, I do the ones on my Weiss machine a couple times a year because I want to inspect uh, parts I want to take a look at everything see if anything is cracked or broken and to take it off we're just going to start with the the uh, little tiny set screw here this uh, tension assembly is uh, kind of special in that it has the smallest, shortest set screw on the machine and it has the longest set screw on the machine. So that's the long and the short of it. But I'm going to go from the short to the long of it. So this little tiny set screw, which has the longest name of any screw, is called the tension indicator flange adapter thumb nut cap set screw and it's a little guy and if you don't want to take it all the way out uh, just loosen it about a half a turn or one turn I'm gonna take it out to show it to you so if you do take it out and you drop it you'll have an idea of what to look for and I, I have a little three dollar uh, stainless steel magnetic parts tray that I put small parts like this on but let's see if I can get that uh, screw out of there to do the disassembly normally you need a tension screw or a jeweler screw and a regular slotted screw for the bigger set screw and that's usually all you need to, to take these apart now let me see if I can zoom yeah, this camera as good as I'm going to get it there is the set screw I want to remove. I'm going to turn it up. And I would usually have the presser foot down to do this because raising it pushes, puts pressure on the tension spring. So I would have the presser foot down and I would have the tension open, meaning turned to the left as far as it'll go. So let's see if we can get in here and get this little guy off of here. It's so tiny. I'm going to just put my tray up here. I magnetized this screwdriver the other day, but I don't know if it's still going to... Oh, it did. I don't know. Can you see that little, little tiny guy at all? Hanging off the end of that screwdriver. Boy, is that small, huh? Whew. Let me show you a picture of that. Okay. So again, if you wanted to leave that on the thumb nut and just loosen it, that's fine too. Let me drop it in my little tray there. So, what that does is hold this cap on this little chrome round donut looking thing in the front 
and that's called the the uh, tension indicator flange adapter thumb nut cap and all that little screw does is hold this little cap on so with that off you should be able to remove the cap and the cap is there because when it's tight it lets you uh, come on you <laughs> it lets you uh, it puts uh, pressure back on the tension spring come on you she got my little magnetizer stick there it is okay so there is the cap I'll show you a picture of it. Okay. Now that we've got the, that off, we can start turning this thumb nut. And a lot of times it's going to bring off the adapter with it. Or, or the... Uh, flange adapter and that looks like what's happened here all kinds of parts are falling off so see if I can remove this thumb nut from the flange adapter there it goes so there's the adjusting nut or the thumb nut you see the little hole there For the little tiny screw. See that little tiny? Look at that. Whew. Take a look at this. Now, <clears throat> once that came off, then the tension. Uh, mm -hmm indicator flange comes off part with the numbers and behind that is you 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 find the actual uh, tension indicator flange adapter and this is like a flanged tube that's got threading inside and outside inside so it can screw onto the tension stud and on the outside so the thumb adjuster can screw on there so that's why it's kind of threaded inside and out Duke. Then what's going to slide off next is the tension indicator flange stop washer. Now this all came off. Let me slip it back on here to show you. This is the stop washer. And that's what braces the top of the beehive spring or the top of the, the small part of the tension spring. Then would be the tension spring itself. And you, can, you can see why it's called the beehive spring. Whoop. <laughs> And, by the way, I've also occasionally heard it called the Pyramid Spring. But you can check this to see if it's uh, broke, if a piece is broken off. A lot of times it'll break right at the bend, right there. 
where it cuts across the center and sometimes for some reason it breaks I found it broken back on the very last coil in here now this part is just called the tension indicator and it's got the negative and positive on the top and this is what your uh, your tension releasing pin pushes against and if you look at the back side of it you might be able to see where it's got marks from that tension releasing pin right there I'll give you a close-up picture of that that's the back side this is the front side That, that holds the tension spring like that and we'll take a look we'll take a look at that closer here okay then next we kind of have an assembly of parts here that kind of all come off together and when I get them off you'll you'll see why that is okay refocus this a little bit as best I can with this camera and I want to talk about taking off this little mini assembly of parts and it's it's five five parts here it in the front here is the thread take up spring thread guard and then behind it are the three tension discs and those four parts are surrounded by the thread take up spring and they, they come off as a unit kind of and you put them back on that way but you just gently pull it straight out and then the spring will come off so here's a better shot of the the thread take up spring thread guard so with the little post and the hook for your needle thread you can look at that okay and then behind it are the three tension discs And, and, and they just go in any position. There's no front or back or one, two, three position. They're the same on both sides and all three of these are the same. Some machines, the center one is and the outside ones are a different curvature, but these are all flat and they go on in any position. And then the thread take up spring. in that spring is a little the last little coil is bent in so it guides into the tension stud now before I take the tension stud out I like to remove these uh, thread guides here and the tall one in the back there is uh, just called the thread guide upper versus the thread guide lower that's that's down uh, wrapped around the needle bar this is the thread guide upper and and uh, the one in front of it here is called the slack thread regulator and tension thread guide slack thread regulator it's got the little stop here and tension thread guide 
and they're held together by the slack thread regulator and tension thread guide upper screw which is just a straight slot screw and we just go right down here and it's lefty loosey and when you take that screw off both both parts just come off so there's the screw and then here here is the uh, slack thread regulator and tension thread guide and you can see these these have some uh, smudges and gunk on them a little bit which is why I like to take them apart and I can see some here on the post too but anyway let's take a look at at this and then the thread guide upper that goes in the back let's take a look at it and this is why I said there's actually a couple of um, thread guides on it this upper one up here when you're bringing your thread down from the thread guide on the arm and you wrap it around the assembly and through the disc and back up to the take-up lever it goes in and out of here then from the take-up lever when you're headed down to the needle bar thread guide it goes the thread goes through here okay so now what we've got left is the tension stud, tension stud set screw, and inside here is the tension releasing pin. Now you can you can take out the, the stud and then shake it and get the pin out. If you're not going to remove the stud, sometimes a little magnet can pull that out, or sometimes you can hook the little flange on the end of the pin with your with your tension screwdriver and try and try and drag that pin out it's, it's kind of stuck in there probably has some dust and thread lint not having much luck getting it out here Okay, so sometimes you can stiffen up your lint brush and drag it out. Nope, so I guess we'll just we'll take out the whole stud. And to do that, you want to release this uh, tension stud set screw. So for right now, I'll just take a screwdriver and it, it loosens to the left, lefty loosey and give it a, a few turns there to loosen that up so I can pull out the tension stud. There. So here's what the tension stud Let's see if I can get the there's the pin. So there's the tension releasing pin. And you can see it has a little like smash tip, a little flange on it. And that's, that's what push, pushes against the uh, tension indicator. Right there. So it would be like this. When you raise that pressure foot lever and the tension release, uh, releasing lever pushes that pin out, that, that's what it's pushing against right there. So here's a, here's a close-up look of the pin. And then 
Okay, now let's take a look at that tension stud. That's how it sits into the machine. You can see that the stud is split here, right down the center, and the hole in the back. That's for the tension releasing pin. And you'll see this gear or flanges and those are for um, on the spring where that last coil is bent in so that when you when you slide it on that bent coil um, is going to slide into one of those grooves and that holds it so that you can actually the spring can coil and then coil uncoil and you have uh, tension so if that um, if that little tail or bent coil breaks off which it, which it can then you will lose your tension because the spring can't operate uh, properly. So that's to check another part. And then I'll give you a close-up view of this. Oh, and, and, and by the way, you see that that's threaded. And that's for for the uh, flange adapter. That's remember it has threads inside, and that's how it would uh, thread onto there, like that. So we started at the short of it, and now all we have left is the long of it. And that's this long set screw. The tension stud set screw. And it has to be long because it has to go from the face all the way over to here to hold that tension stud. So let's take it out. It's, it's lefty loosey, but uh, if you've never taken out, it'll surprise you because it's lefty, 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 loosey. It's got about a half inch of, of thread. It has more thread than most of the set screws are long. And once you get it worked out there where you can get your fingers on it, just keep going. You'll feel it when it comes free, and then you can pull it right out. There's the long of it. There's the longest set screw on the machine. Let's take a close look at it. Okay, so by comparison, see if I can dig around to the bottom of these parts here. I find that little tiny screw with the big name and there they are the long and the short of the tension assembly or the tension unit or the upper tension unit <laughs> so now you've got it all uh, disassembled you can check for those damaged or broken parts if you bought a machine at a thrift shop or Craigslist and the tension doesn't work, now you know how to disassemble that and you have a better idea of all the working parts. Don't be surprised if you have parts missing because I've often bought machines from thrift shops or Craigslist where parts are missing. Somebody took it apart, couldn't figure it out, lost, lost the, the stop washer or has a broken spring tail something like that. Um, later I'll be showing how to reassemble everything just in 
kind of backwards of how we took it off be putting it back on and then in the adjustment part of the of the series I'll be showing how to adjust that tension back uh, to the factory setting um, now to, to clean it I clean these parts the same way I clean the other small parts so if you have watched or would like to watch uh, part 10a of the 404 series you'll see that video on how I use the crud cutter and a hair dryer to, to wash and dry all of the little parts and I clean these the same way so I'll put a link to that below and I, I, I think there's something I can put on the end of the video too a card or annotation or something and I'll try and figure that out I'm not a big videographer computer guy but but for sure I'll put the click link below to part 10a or you can navigate there yourself uh, part 10a of the 404 restoration series but that was a long video I'm sure by the time I get this all put together but I the, the tension is worth it the tension is just super important you know on these uh, older vintage singers you can have a few problems your 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 uh, timing can be off a little bit um, the adjustment of the needle point to the hook for distance can be off um, the height of the needle bar can be off a little bit you can even have a little bent needle and your feed regulator is not working right and you can still make a stitch but when your tension is messed up it, you, you're just not going to get any sewing done so it's good for you to know about tension to keep it clean and how to adjust it so in my all about tension mini series we'll be covering all that stuff so I hope that was a good one a good one for you I, I'm glad that you watched it and I'm happy that you tuned in to, to Andy tube and I hope to see you on the next uh, video thank you and take care